Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. Later in the program, we'll talk with Craig Silverstein, Silverberg, Silverman, you know, he used to be on radio. We'll find out what's new in his world. But first, I want to introduce you to a guy that I've just recently met, Keith, Heath Fuhrer. Thank you for being with us. John, thanks for All having right. me. I wanted to invite you on because you, for me, are, are one of those great little Colorado stories. This is you know, a person makes a living off of the beauty of Colorado and what Colorado is, and, and government is putting you out of business. I, I just want to understand the story. Tell me the company you own. Uh, the name of my company is the Colorado Sightseer. And uh, we operate half-day and full-day sightseeing tours of Denver and the Rocky Mountains that are meant to get people out to see and explore, and as you mentioned, to actually see some of the beautiful sights that we have here in Colorado. All right, so th this, it's a sightseeing company. It's a sightseeing tour company, right. that's correct. You should have a helicopter. Helicopter would be cool. That would be nice, a little yeah. bit expensive. That right, would be nice. Think, think about the helicopter. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? You drive people around and you show them the sights, I'm assuming more in the mountains than, than downtown. Um, oftentimes that's more of what people want to see actually is they want to get out into the Rocky Mountain scenery of Colorado um, and actually we've been doing it uh, 18 years and our goal is to get people out to see and explore so we have like tours of the city of Denver uh, down to Colorado Springs, Pikes Peak, Rocky Mountain National Park, Breckenridge, top of Mount Evans. All right, so This is a great state to be in your business because there's so much to see, there's so many places to go and somebody comes here they might not know the area and they want to know they want to know the inside story they go to you. That's correct we kinda right. like to call it Discovery Channel on Wheels of Colorado. And how many how many people have you toured? Um, you know I would say over the last 18 years probably more than 40,000 people. All right. So you've taken 40,000 people, you've brought them around the state where they drop money into the economy. Not only are they paying you to take them around, but you take them places, they see new towns, they see new places, and they spend money. Is that correct? Well, that is correct. They get to, you know, visit gift shops in different areas, Estes Park, or, you know, some of the places like Buffalo Bill Museum or Echo Lake. You're not the convention center, all right? You're not bringing in 50,000 people for for the uh, whatever convention at a time. You're bringing them a handful at a time, is that right? That is correct, and actually we get a lot of business from, uh, from the uh, folks that visit Denver Brings in for conventions here in Denver. All right, how do you show them around? Do you, do you carry them on your back? Is it a bicycle? What do you do? Well, we actually uh, we offer our daily tours out of 15 passenger minibuses or less, uh, as our goal, as I mentioned, is actually to get people out to see and explore rather than just driving by the sites. And also, we're, too, we're, to not, have we're not talking about a huge bus, you know, one of those buses you take up to uh, go gambling in Blackhawk or a big, huge RTD-style bus. Is that right? That is correct, actually. We find those to be a little bit more impersonal, and uh, we want to try to be more personalized with people and, and like I said, kind of give them a, a lot more information right. and a personalized experience. Basically, you take, you take a van and you customize it. And a lot of people, uh, RTD's Assessor Ride, the shuttle that takes people to the airport, uh, those, it's that type of van. That it is actually, it? yeah, okay. just very much similar to the RTD Assessor Ride without the uh, wheelchair access. Right. I, I don't, I don't want to get too detailed in this, but just, just to restate, you have this little company You've taken 40,000 people to see the great sights of Colorado. You've paid your taxes, and you've had to buy these, these vehicles. How many of these do you have? I only have three vehicles. Three of them? Yes. What do they cost? Um, you know, they cost anywhere from thirty to 60,000, depending on how, how nice you want them to, to be. 30 to 60,000? Mm -hmm. Wow. All right, so, but it's, it's a nice vehicle. They're, they're a decent vehicle, absolutely. Right. You, this, is, this is the key expense you have, I'm assuming, that uh, as far as a capital expense, you've got to buy this, this, this bus. That would be correct. This van. Yes. How long have you had the van that you use? Um, well, we've had some of the, um, some of the vehicles for uh, uh, 10 to 15 years. Um, uh, one of them that we're going to discuss today, actually, I've had since uh, 2007. All right. One of, one of the things when, when you're a small business guy, that you do everything. 
So not only do you do the advertising, I imagine you do the tours yourself, or most of them. You have to take care of the paperwork. You got to file the things with the with the state. You've got to take care of all this stuff. Am I am I right? There's a lot of duties actually right. in being a small business owner. You, you you don't have you don't have a fleet department that takes care of your your vehicles. You're not like the post office or UPS where there's there's a whole machinery to take care of these buses. Well, that is correct. Right. Actually, I take most right. care of everything myself. Building all this, in case you're wondering, for this punchline, I want to make sure, and I think we all want to make sure, that when you're driving people around to see the beautiful sights of Colorado, they're safe, that they're, they're not in danger, that this van that you use is up to snuff, that it's been inspected, that it, and that you've been inspected, that you're able, you're able to drive it appropriately, that it's insured. How do I know that that's the case? Um, well, uh, we, we are actually regu regulated by the Colorado Public Utilities Commission, but uh, uh, more important to me, John, is I don't want to uh, have our company be making national headlines or anything like that. So uh, I'm pretty uh, serious about the maintenance of our vehicles, and uh, we get regular oil changes, complete vehicle inspections uh, every three to 3,000 to 3,500 miles. And, uh, you know, if there's any question about, you know, even small question about something, we make sure that uh, everything is is taken care of uh, because you know also we don't want any of our vehicles to break down out on the road um, and have uh, upset customers. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's pretend I actually believe you. I need to know if somebody's doing your business that they're actually safe. Now you might be a wonderful guy, but maybe there are people out there who aren't wonderful guys, and that's why I think it's a legitimate role of government to inspect your vehicle and to make sure that it's that it's okay before you can do your business. Do you, do you have a problem with that? Um, you know what, I do not have a problem with, uh, with making sure that our vehicles are safe or anything. I, I definitely don't have a problem with that. Right. Um, and I, I do a lot more maintenance and inspections that are, than are what are required by law. All right. Let's get down to it. How many folks can you put on this bus? Um, there are 14 passenger vehicles. All right. So there's 14 people. Does that include you, the driver? It does not. All right. So it's you plus 14 people. How long has, and let's take the, the van you've been working on, how long have you been using this, this one particular van? Um, since uh, November of 2007. Since 2007. How many times has the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission, come to, to check it out? Um, they have come out, um, I believe, uh, two times during that time period. All right. And so they they have certified it roadworthy and you roadworthy uh, a few times. That is correct. Okay. What's your beef? Um, well, the beef this time around actually is uh, first of all they they always seem to find something that they can uh, pick on us about. Um, but uh, what they've what they've basically decided at this point in time is they've decided that uh, they want to change the seating capacity of our vehicle. Uh, in the uh, in the front, it's one of those Ford van E350 cutaways with the box on the back, like the RTD accessoride vehicles. And uh, in uh, the passenger seat up the front, in the front, there's actually a rack that is up there that we use to uh, put our cooler snacks and baskets. I think we've got a picture of it. Well, let's put it put it up there again while we're while we're looking at it. But this is so instead of that seat, you have this rack where you can put in your brochures and obviously uh, you know, water or whatever else it is. You don't have a seat where there's often a passenger seat, is that correct? That is correct, and it was actually, um, it was built that way by the dealer uh, in the first place. All right, so it was built this way, and the PUC has said, that's fine. All right, if I have the story right, they've come up and said, you know what, Heath, you're a nice guy, but that rack, you could take that out and put another seat in it. That's, that correct with, that's correct with the exception of you're a nice guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the big deal? So you, you could take it and put another seat into it. What, why does that matter? Um, well, it matters because it puts us into a, a whole new level of regulation uh, that basically uh, is, is, would cost a lot more money um, to operate uh, and um, is not part of our, our business plan. But see, this is, this is the kind of stuff that I don't think people understand because if you don't have a small business, you don't understand how regulators can mess with your life on the most inane thing. So this has been a van that was built to this specification to hold 14 passengers. And before the PUC said, yes, it holds 14 passengers, 
Now, out of the blue, they say, you know that same van we said could hold 14? We now think, you know, you could put 15 in there. And what that does by the bureaucracy is it bumps you up a whole new classification of regulations. What are these new regulations? Um, the new regulations would include um, having each one of our drivers have to have a commercial driver's license with the size of the vehicles that we've been operating. That is not a requirement. Um, it would require them to have fingerprinting on file with the Colorado PUC, uh, requires them to have background checks, uh, requires instituting a drug and alcohol testing program, and me as a supervisor that uh, supervises uh, these people who drive the, the tour guides that we have that drive the vehicles for us. I, I actually do not drive tours very often anymore myself, um, but uh, as, a, as a supervisor, I would be required to take like three classes a year for supervising a drug and alcohol program uh, that costs about $500 a piece. Are there any, uh, any other sort of costs involved with this? I mean, it sounds like a lot of brain damage. But fingerprints, all right. Uh, getting a commercial driver's license means you got to send all your guys to school, and I'm sure that's not uh, something in your budget. Does it affect your insurance? Does it affect anything else? Um, they have actually said that uh, because they've decided to reclassify the seating capacity of our vehicle, uh, that we're underinsured. So you have to pay more in, in that insurance. I yes, if, right. if 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 we were absolutely subject to those regulations. Anybody who's been through a permitting process understands these little things. The difference is, and tell me if I'm wrong, that being a businessman, a sole proprietor, that these smaller costs you simply cannot absorb. That these costs, which may sound pretty reasonable on the outside, are putting your business in jeopardy. Am I wrong on this? Um, that is correct, John, and, and really the big thing with it is is that, uh, first of all, you know, and I, I think it's the same as you mentioned for any small business, but the profit margin is very, uh, very small in the first place. Um, and uh, not only that, but I can't just go out and immediately raise my prices to cover these costs. Uh, first of all, I have printed materials and everything that are on display at different brochures uh, through the visitor centers uh, and everything around town. And then secondly, um, we are regulated by the PUC, so we have to actually actually get our rates approved to increase them by the PUC. So you have to increase your costs, which it costs you a lot. You can't increase your costs until you go to the PUC that's already denied you. Now the governor appoints the people on the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, this is our business friendly uh, governor. You've gone to the PUC and said this is unreasonable. What, what, what's been the response? Um, the PUC, well, I, I have presented them with documents, um, the title from the vehicle as a 14-passenger vehicle. Um, I have spoken with um, a gentleman by the name of Ron Jack. He is actually the director of um, transportation and operations at the PUC. He insists that they disagree that it is a 16-passenger vehicle um, and um, that if I continue to operate the vehicle without meeting their extra regulations that uh, uh, we will be subject to daily fines. All this for a vehicle that for the last seven years has been perfectly fine with the same organization. That is correct. And, and you haven't changed it at all? No, I have not I, done anything to it. Nothing, nothing I never even thought about are you using this van now? Yes. All right. So are you in violation of the PUC regulations? I do not believe we are because according to the actual law itself, uh, with the seating capacity of the vehicle, um, and we have never changed it. It is what it was titled by the dealer. Have you tried to contact the governor on this? I have tried to contact the and governor. And success? Um, no success? They looked into it a little bit but then refused to help me. And this is your livelihood. It is if my livelihood. If the PUC wins this one and you can't afford a lawyer you're not gonna be able to take this court if they just stick with their guns what happens to your company um we'll probably be forced to close yeah. i hope you win heath best of luck to you i appreciate it i know what it's like to go through that stick around i want you to say hello again to to mr silverman